Hey YouTube, welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video with Mr. Terry as I continue my never-ending quest for historical knowledge found here on the internet. All right, um, today's video um, is the winner of the weekly patrons pick poll over on uh, Patreon. Uh, one of the perks of being a Patreon pledger um, to the channel is you get to participate in a weekly poll um, with options of videos that will get uh, kind of fast track to being on the channel today. So um, today's video, that one, is titled What If the Middle East Had Unified? And it's by Alternate History Hub. So I've done Alternate History um, uh, Hub video before. Uh, I think this is maybe the, just the second one that I've done. And um, these are guys kind of interesting because they're kind of hypothetical situations um, to events in history or decisions in history that had they gone differently um, could have had potentially had a major effect in the world. And this is one that um, I am interested in, especially depending on what, what they decide to kind of focus on. Um, because uh, I did the, the, the biggest project I, I did in, in college as a history student, uh, my senior thesis was on um, the Balfour Declaration and the Pan-Arab response um, to that. And that would have included um, a, a unification of kind of the possible attempt at a unif an Arab world sort of unification to the Balfour Declaration, which um, if you don't know much about that, that in, roughly speaking was um, basically a support by the British for a Jewish homeland in uh, in kind of the Middle East, and um, I'd done a, a, a the biggest research project I ever done was was trying to um, explain that, explain kind of the Arab world response to that, and um, I don't know if that necessarily would be covered in here, but this is uh, you know one of the things that potentially could have caused unification. So I mean, there's a lot of things they can go for here, and a lot of different time periods they could go for here. And I don't know, I'm interested to see, uh, yeah, definitely what they do. All right, before we watch it, though, if you like the original video, make sure you go down below to um, the description where there will be a link to the original video. Make sure you like and subscribe over there to make sure the content creators get their support there. Um, again, though, this was uh, chosen by patron pledgers. So if you would be interested in supporting the channel, maybe being one of our patron pledgers, there will also be a link down below and you can get involved that way in supporting the channel. All right. Let's go ahead and get started then. What if the Middle East had unified? Alternate History Hub. Oh, we go with like some, some, some Western music, or at least the era part. The Middle East is in a bit of a pickle lately. Let's just say the civil wars aren't really boosting the property levels. There are many reasons to why the region is the way it is. <laughs> boosting the property levels. There are many reasons to why the region is. War in the Middle East once again. <laughs> the way it is. Israel, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, King out of United States and Russia to, in Russia slap fight. One major contributing right. factor goes back only a century to when the area was divided into the states we know today. Now okay, cool. So, yeah, this is when uh, I was talking about that I had, I had done research, um, which basically starts right after World War I. Um, actually, before uh, World War I, before the, before the World Wars, uh, with as a result of the, um, the resources, okay, that the... Uh, um, the British had, had, had gotten from uh, um, Jewish community was was uh, I guess kind of thanked in a way is kind of from the research I kind of I kind of got from that was kind of thanked in a way with that after World War One when the Ottoman Empire would be um, basically dismantled and the uh, Western Allies would come to to take the region would um, establish or at least help establish a homeland. Right in in um, in this region, given it wasn't supposed to disrupt the local communities, um, that's a different story, you know, for for uh, what what ends up happening. But yeah, all right. So yeah, the British and the French um, after the war they established the mandates um, there in what's today called the Middle East, or so like Iraq, Syria, et cetera, would be, and these would be overseen by those Western powers after World War One. 
Now, if you're confused about what I'm talking about, I discussed the entire history and debacle in this previous video. It talks about how Britain and France split the Arab region into artificial states. That's not a shameless plug. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch that or you'll be very confused. Okay. They, the, long story short, with the borders and stuff they end up creating, again, for those nations I just discussed, um, they were highly objectionable as, as uh, legitimate kind of borders. Um, one of the, one of the big, like, uh, one, one of the big grievances sort of of that was that the borders ended up being created, did not take into account a lot of factors. Um, one is sort of the regional split of the region, um, religious splits and things like that, where these borders are far more artificial than they are natural of what a, a real kind of border should probably look like. And, um, that is that has of course created a lot of uh, political issues today with with these different groups that are together in nation states that may or may not have business being together. Um, similar thing happened, of course, in in Africa, um, in the scramble for Africa, and then the, and then through the decolonization movement was that the the borders kind of created in in, in Africa um, did not make a lot of sense. Um, to actually showing uh, what should be more natural borders based on like ethnic ties and those sort of things. You good? <clears throat> Everyone caught up? So, as you know, there was an agreement between the Arab rebels and the British during World War I. If the Arabs revolted against the Turks, then they would be able to have their own unified state in the aftermath. The entire region was to be ruled by the Sharif of Mecca, Hussein bin Ali. I want to imagine an alternate timeline where this original plan is actually upheld and the Europeans don't back out of it. Okay. What if the Middle East, at least the Arab part, was truly unified? So, let's begin. Because obviously they wouldn't be doing this video if it had happened. So, yeah, you're thinking of something differently. Combining Saudi Arabia and again, what would be like probably Palestine, Iraq, Syria, Jordan. That sort of thing that of course doesn't happen um so something obviously happened from that agreement to eventually what actually happens right if we're going by this map of the original agreement this new state controls everything south of turkey to the edge of the peninsula it will be between british egypt and iran and the state will simply call it the arabian kingdom because i'm not very original so yippee the arabian kingdom exists everything is hunky-dory except that it isn't. Nothing ever is. Even if the Sharif is promised this land and the Arabian Kingdom internationally is recognized to control all of this land, it doesn't mean that they actually would. This is a good time True. to bring up that the House of Saud still exists. At the time the agreement was made, the Saud controlled a sizable chunk of the Eastern Peninsula. They wouldn't simply lose the land once the Arabian Kingdom was made. Even if their land wasn't included in the new Arab state, it's still very likely this fundamentalist and militaristic faction would compete with the larger Hashemite kingdom. So you can see already this this didn't really take into account. Like it looks it looks okay on paper. The House of Saud, the very powerful, um, basically dynasty in, in in Saudi Arabia, would um, which is you know uh, basically rules over Saudi Arabia today um, would then no matter what would have had issues. Because this area, people understand actually how ethnically and tribally diverse the Arabian Peninsula is. Again, going all the way up to Turkey, there are so many different groups um, of different, uh, again, different different ethnicities and, and even different uh, branches of Islam, which of course is the dominant religious force in this region, um, that it's more diverse than the geography here would probably lend you to believe. Um, so this was very difficult, even if it had happened and this, this, these borders had been created would have still been difficult to unify. I definitely would believe that. Within the first decade of this new Arab kingdom's life, it probably fights a war against the house of Saud. Yeah. Unlike our own time. Probably the Sharif state is large enough and connected enough that it can easily beat back any Saud advancements, perhaps just wipe out the Saud entirely with the help of the British. Simply by sticking with their the British have done agreement, that, though. the Sharif has a larger state to defend himself and the friendship between his kingdom and the British continue on to stop the Saud from ever rising in the first place. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay. let's move on further. World War II happened. I, uh, um, would the British have cared enough afterwards anyways? Maybe maybe before World War II. After World War II, they probably wouldn't have enough. Um, as they had kind of lost, not interest, but definitely some of the motivation to hold on to some of these colonial um, sort of acquisitions and, and territories that they have. So, maybe between the World Wars... They may have, but um, British may have not wanted to pick a side. But then again, they did side with the community in World War One to fight against the Ottomans. So yeah, possibly. It's one thing about alternate history videos. I guess I can't. You can't help but try to put in some personal opinion in it. Otherwise, what's what's going to be the point of a of a reaction video of a of a um, alternative or a hypothetical sort of history, right? And is over. The Middle East was allied friendly for the most part, with relationships growing between Arabia yeah. and America FDR, yeah. and the colonies of Britain and France being invaded by Germany. After the war, this in our timeline was a time of decolonization. Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, and Israel were all born around the 40s, as Britain and France's empires, well, died. So they're not going to bring up the... the course of events that led to the creation of Israel, kind of going back to the Balfour Declaration, um, which again basically established that the British would support a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Um, and of course that, that basically happens um, uh, within Palestine there. And that's where you get not the, the, the official creation of Israel won't happen for decades later as, as an independent state. Um, that's going to take a lot longer um, decades after just this idea, which, uh, again, just because it's not completely connected what they do, um, definitely look into that, what the, 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 the kind of domino effect of the Balfour Declaration ended up creating. Yet in this alternate timeline, that doesn't happen, of course, because it's all one big unified state, but it's still going to be a time of change. The Arabs, okay. just like everyone else, will be stuck in the new international reality that is the Cold War. Sure. In the Middle East, however, it isn't simply an ideological struggle between capitalism and communism, yeah, that's not but it. between traditional elements and social change. Yeah, I could see that. You know, the Middle East ends up being a big piece of um, the Cold War, in a way, as both Russia and the United States were hoping to gain allies and strategic pos positioning. Um, there. You see this becoming a big deal too later on with uh, <laughs> uh, during kind of the, 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 the arms race, right? Where especially the United States, you know, with, with, with Turkey ends up kind of being a, a military alliance that way, um, a place to put American nukes so they can be closer to, um, uh, to Russia. And of course the oil value and that sort of thing that comes in that both sides would like you get a strategic positioning. So yeah, having, they're basically playing uh, each other off of that. Um, and some nations were able to kind of do that differently. I mean, Egypt, although they're not really talking about Egypt right now under Nasser was kind of able to play the Americans and the Russians kind of almost against each other and use it almost more to his advantage um, because that would have been a very powerful ally in this region. This becomes even more prevalent when the Arab state uses modern technology to discover the vast oil supplies underneath the desert. What does that mean? Everybody wants to be allies with Arabia. Yep. Or at least everybody wants to make Arabia their ally. Since this is <laughs> like it or not. history, and it's impossible for me to predict exactly who would win to make Arabia their friend, I've decided this could go really three ways. Okay. Each is if a certain ideology influences the modern Arab state, and how exactly it could go. First, what if the West influences the Arab state? The closest comparison I could make to this is how America is allies with Saudi Arabia today. Yeah. Throughout the United States and Saudi Arabia's history, they have operated on a staunch anti-communist policy. Assad would keep oil moving, and the U.S. would help them against communist revolutionaries trying to weaken the power of the monarchy. In this alternate timeline, this is the same type of relationship, except larger and more profound. Yeah, I could. Uh, that would definitely make sense. That's definitely plausible. With the uh, there's already such a strong economic relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia um, that just that on a larger scale would happen especially with the house of saud um but although they had talked about maybe that falling so maybe to combat those communist influences 
The West might support largely religious and traditional figures in the state. Movements in the Islamic world that call for secularization and anti-religious policies were usually socialist in nature, and ironically were seen as against American foreign policy. Now, okay. for those thinking I'm attacking traditional beliefs and conservatism, let me remind you, I'm not talking about our Western version of conservatism. Sure. When I say conservative, I mean women separate from men, hijab is mandatory, Islamic conservatism. If America influenced Arabia, this alternate timeline in many ways is the closest to our own. They are not religiously fanatical like the House of Saud, but compared to the two other timelines, the Arab state is more conservative in nature. The good news is it wouldn't remain this conservative forever. The yeah, people also don't understand in the Arab world how much um, secularization today varies in a bunch of those countries, right? With with how strict maybe they are to, um, again, a lot of the, the, the traditional uh, or traditions um, or fundamentalism um, of Islam. Um, it varies greatly and people definitely will bulk that together but it's, it's like saudi arabia is going to be different than like syria you know somewhere like that where in one country might have like mandatory basically uh, wearing of the hijab or the headdress or um more and more to secular region um uh, that maybe you don't see that as much like it's again incredibly diverse actual hashemite kingdoms like jordan are far more liberal societies than yeah. saudi arabia progress in the American yeah it's, I mean Syria and and, and uh, so somewhere like Syria or Turkey or um, uh, Jordan like you're saying being more progressive that way than definitely like Saudi Arabia or maybe Iran or something like that in timeline simply is over a longer period of time but because this is over this vast stretch of time this might be the safest alternate timeline as more traditional elements don't feel as threatened in a timeline where the Soviets won influence instead, things would be far more dramatic and, well, more difficult. All right, let's see what they the say. The Soviets were atheist, and that made them much more radical compared to the Christian West. Soviet history in the region is less about cooperation and more about funding movements to destabilize the monarchy. Any other funding that would lead to, say, a complete revolution, I predict would lead to a civil war within the state. I think this is the least likely, however, so I don't want to yeah. focus too much on this possibility. In this third alternate timeline, this unified Arab state is taken over by Ba'athist ideology. Some of you, well most of you, are probably thinking, what is Ba'athism? Well, the best thing I can say is that Ba'athism is an ideology that is a strange blend of socialism and nationalism. Ba'athists, at least the original proponents in the 1950s, believed that Arabs should unify and work together to make their societies just as modern as Asia and Europe. Simply put, it was meant to bring on a second Arab renaissance. So, uh, a modernization, not necessarily a westernization, because sometimes people will conflate the two, that to modernize you have to westernize. Um, this was something the Arab world, regardless of what had happened, had uh, attempted in certain ways. Modernization um, happened in Egypt. Um, uh, uh, Iran was doing it um, earlier on in the Shah and and uh, or uh, yeah, before that. And but trying to modernize without necessarily westernizing that was one of the big the big fears that a lot of people had a lot of more fundamentalists that you know, again modernization meant westernization um which felt could have been a, th a threat to kind of the fundamental um, society of islam um, that some of them had had kind of held on to and of course different nations kind of uh, approach that differently but historically speaking back up this this had been an issue for centuries um, where they say like maybe um, ultra conservatives and like the Ottoman Empire had resisted some of the modernization uh, because of its possible threat of westernization and especially in the decolonization era which is what this is talking about people were fearful that this modernization could lead to a westernization again of their culture which would just mean imperialism right it's it, they're more fearful of imperialism and and being dominated by these western outside forces which they saw as different that's the one thing you'll see in some of the islamic revolutions happening in places like iran where where anti-imperialism blended with 
uh, basically Islamic revivalism and and trying to get back to uh, Islamic fundamentals because that was seen as as nationalistic. Um, the religion, you know, uh, embracing the religion more into their culture um, was uh, also seen as a nationalistic thing. Like the one of the medieval era. That's actually what won a second Arab renaissance like the one of the medieval era. That's actually what Bath means. Renaissance. Now, while this sounds hunky-dory and everything, their idea Maybe. of how to do this was to simply seize power, have a one-party authoritarian rule, and change the Arab world by force. Anyway, this ideology sort of devolved by the 1970s. Iraqi Baathism was eventually just hijacked by Saddam Hussein, and Syria's is actually still around today with Assad. Now, in my opinion, this could be the ideology that had the greatest chance to take hold in a unified Arab state. It'd also be one that Arabs would use to combat the influence of both the West and of communism. Yep. However, this has some ramifications. Since Baathism was about bringing the people into the modern day by force, there will be some sort of overthrow of the Sharif or King and replace him with a new secular dictator. Keep in mind, Wahhabism still would exist even if it didn't have political power, so it's likely yeah. there'd be some form of conflict and social revolt between traditionalists and secularists. Yeah. If successful, it'd be a strange... I mean, that, that had been going on for centuries. Um, before this, uh, especially, yeah, in, in the, the modernization, um, even before even like the Industrial Revolution, um, this kind of modernizing, it, it was not embraced by everybody necessarily um, because of the threat to the traditional order. Third ideology that could stand against capitalist and communist influences, and if successful, is the key phrase. When first writing this video, I imagined that the Middle East might be a far more peaceful place if it was unified. Perhaps the land was richer and no. able to harness its oil to become wealthy like the West. No. But I think I was kinda wrong. There is one consistent theme throughout all of these scenarios. The fate of the Middle East would be detrimental to both sides in the Cold War. True. This means that what even about if internally? Arabia was unified, it still might face civil wars, revolutions, and conflict. Just different kinds of conflict. There would be fights over the change in Arab society. If the House of Saud had been defeated early in the 20th century, Wahhabism doesn't have the financial influence to then spread amongst the Islamic world. Zealous Islamic militias still exist, of course, but I doubt they'd have as many numbers or as much support like today. Because those groups, domino, domino effect wise, uh, um, uh, today is, is Islamic militant groups. It, there's a, um, it definitely has an effect from the Cold War as a lot of them were radicalized in fighting off these other powers. Specifically, like like some uh, an example would be the uh, fight of Afghanistan against um, Russia, right back in the eighties, and uh, and um, ended up kind of radicalizing a lot of people after that, as it was seen as a fight against imperialism um, and that sort of thing. So they still, again, would have needed to defend themselves off against whatever whatever side that it was, whether it was American influence or um, the Soviet influence. Because that is definitely something that helped the radicalization, which would have happened probably, you know, like they're saying, I think I agree, would have happened regardless of if the Arab world was unified or not. Because that, it ends up, it does end up unifying a lot of uh, people um, anyways. The conflicts are far more secular. A unified Middle East story in the 20th century is one trying to find out what it is. There isn't competition between dictators of artificial states, but competition between ideologies Iraq. for the fate of the nation. It might not be the peaceful world that you would imagine, however it would lead to one thing. Change. In this alternate timeline, what would, what would there change? could be actual change in the region instead of going back like it did in this century. Whose ideas would Maybe win in not. the end? Well, who can say? These are simply three possibilities for what I believe could have happened. There is countless possibilities for what might have been, and this is just me theorizing. Can we so go? what do you think would have happened? This is Cody, of Alternate History Hub. Yeah. The, the Arab world, 
especially since World War One, had every poss- had had plenty of good reasons to unify. It's almost after studying again, going back to my my college project, um, one of the biggest unifying factors. Um, could easily have been uh, the creation of a Jewish homeland, right? In in the Arab world, um, so losing that, I mean that that could have given every opportunity for the Arab world to unify that way, and it and it didn't. Same with the Cold War, right? Every uh, every every uh, opportunity or, or um, legitimate reason to unify was there as well. So that. The what if the Middle East had unified? Um, I mean, that's that's different. They're saying if they did unify, but even if they did, they still would have had issues because there were so many, and they didn't really talk about what are the, so many as many of the well, did talk about some of the things that did end up um, um, creating disunity, right? But the the Sunni Shia split, or just the tribal differences that have existed in this area forever, um, the aristocracy and things like that, especially when oil is coming in, about who controls land and how profitable that is. Uh, there were so many divisions. Regardless, that if the Middle East had unified, it may not have stayed unified. Actually, possibly, or at least wouldn't have um, probably been successfully ruled without a pretty brutal dictatorship um to keep that under control and what you end up having is almost like sometimes mini dictatorships you know throughout throughout the the the, the different states um because they they don't become unified so i mean they had every reason to and also they didn't not try either the in 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 my research i was telling you about um the arab world did there were attempts to create that um, there were plenty of powerful people that it's called the pan pan Arabism. Um, there were attempts at it for sure, but they they had failed. They they tried to unify. It's it was a very real thing that was attempted, um, and not necessarily had to be would have needed to be done by like the British, for example, which was kind of on the plate that they said if the British helped do that, um, they had every opportunity to, um, but didn't. And again, because of so many of the differences now, again, would things have been better off if they had, I mean, they kind of talked about that. It, it looks like with what he's saying, and I would kind of believe that it very well could have had the same results anyways, which is turning into what it's more like today, just with more borders. Right. So, I mean, that's a, that's a complicated thing to, to talk about and without trying to get into a, a lot of the modern, modern politics behind it, but just from the historical perspective, that's just kind of what I had been thinking. So I don't think there are too many things here that I would necessarily disagree with. Um, and, 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 and how I, I guess I would view alternative history kind of videos and, and topics is how plausible are the things that they propose. Um, when the other video I did from them or another alternate history, uh, history video I done was um, with, I think it was, what if the Germans had won World War One? I forget exactly which scenario was the scenario was that was a long time ago. I remember thinking a lot of the scenarios that they thought of or they, they thought of like just were not quite in the realm of real possibility where some of this uh, I, I do think um, could have been more possible that way. But anyways, I don't know what that's worth to you um, seeing my perspective on it. But um, I don't know if you were interested, you probably wouldn't have come 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 and watch there. So. Anyway, uh, I think that will do it. So let's move on a little bit, do it with that part. Let's go ahead and move on. Hey, so this is an update. You're probably wondering why my video schedule has been so infrequent, to say the least, for the last few months. Yeah. Well, I feel it's time to say what's been going on. Do a video every Alternate day. Alternate History is at its core about stories and fiction. It takes a it's long It's a branch time. of science fiction that has been around for decades. With each alternate history video, I just scratch the surface of worlds that could be fleshed out in a full novel. And now, I'm happy to say that I'm writing an alternate history novel of my own. Yes, this is actually happening, publisher and all. What's your writing? I always loved the concept of the Atlantropa project. The idea to dam up the Mediterranean and change the face of Europe. I love the idea of it because it was conceived with so much optimism. But if it was actually created, it would have doomed everybody. I'll announce more details about what this book is in a future video around the summer, 
but I'm talking about it right now because this is why the schedule has been so infrequent. This world that you're seeing through concept art is where my time lately has went to. I'm sorry that the video schedule has suffered Chewbacca? because of that, but I feel like this is a story that will only be good if I give 100% of my effort. At least this is how it has been for the last few months. So it's Mad I Max. To figure out <laughs> plot lines and characters and all that stuff. Now I finally know where the story is going, how it is going to end, and now I can go back to the channel. I just wanted to let you know this is what my 2018 has been, and I can't wait for you guys to see more of it later this year. This is Cody of Ultimate History Hub. Alright. Okay. But yeah, anyway, uh, um, that, I think that'll do it there. Interesting what he's um, working on over there to look into that. All right, if you like this original video, make sure you go down to the description and I'll link you to it so you can give them a like and subscribe. If you have not, if you've already subscribed, definitely give them a, a like and the view so they get the support over there. Um, again, this was chosen by our uh, the Patreon pledgers, so um, thanks to you guys for, for doing that. Um, a new video, look out for a new poll. It's coming up. If you'd like to join us, um, people of all donation tiers get to join um, uh, into in the into participating in the polls. And at this moment, tiers start at uh, just a dollar. So you can uh, get involved that way. Okay, um, other than that, uh, the last thing to plug is if you have not joined our Discord community, make sure you uh, do that. There's a link down below to join, um, again, a very active uh, community. Right now, there are over 3,100 members, um, a lot of active, just uh, interesting, good people that love to talk history. And uh, if you're a kind of history-minded person, I think you could find a nice home there. It's a great way to communicate with the, the community a um, little bit more with me and just get involved. A little bit more in what's going on so that is also linked down below all right with that i think we'll go ahead and end it here thanks again for viewing thank you for your support and i hope to see you soon bye